Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with John Golich, who is CEO and founder of Travel and Adventure Shows, which many of you may know about already. Uh, John already had a few shows this year, believe it or not, before uh, we entered into this crisis. Uh, we're going to talk to him about that, what he's doing now, and what the future holds for Travel and Adventure Shows. And this is Insider Travel Report. John, well, first of all, how are you and where are you? Well, we are in Connecticut and still under work at home orders through our governor, although we're starting to open up around May 20th, they say. We will probably uh, support the governor saying work at home till June 1st and we'll start slowly reopening the office. So we're, uh, we're all learning how to hunk down and work at home. Yeah, so um, I, I, we are learning about that, that's for sure. Well, tell us, for those who don't know about your travel and adventure shows, uh, those travel advisors that are our audience and may not be as familiar with them, uh, what, are the, what are they, who are your attendees and your exhibitors, and what's your programming? Well, we've been the largest series of travel uh, expert shows in the United States, and they're called the Travel and Adventure Shows. You can find out all about them at TravelShows.com. But it's a series of 10 major metro areas we bring in for a weekend, uh, hundreds and hundreds of exhibitors, which vary from tourism boards from around the world, around the country, tour operators, airlines, cruise lines, travel insurance companies, travel products, and anything on travel. And we introduce them face to face with tens of thousands of enthusiasts or consumers. Do uh, hundreds and hundreds of agents in each market. We have travel agent uh, programming. We have consumer programs. It's really just a giant festival of all about travel, but it's really for next vacation. We know about 76% of people who come through that door end up buying a vacation from someone they meet at that show or a destination. It serves a great purpose. We capture all these attendees, about 220,000 of them year round, who are in the planning stages of travel and they're looking for resources. So they might meet a travel agent on the show, they might have uh, a new tour operator, or they might come in looking in Costa Rica and end up walking out with a safari on their list for next year. So it's a, it's a fun little event. No, great. And you have them in a number of cities across the country. And indeed, you, a number of your shows you had in the first quarter already, you, completed, you successfully completed some of them, correct? We did. We uh, do all 10 shows in the first quarter. Wow. Uh, and it's almost weekend after weekend. We're traveling around the country and enjoying it as our exhibitors come with us, meeting new consumers. We bring the show to them and new agents. But we did get Atlanta, Boston. Atlanta for the first time ever, as a matter of fact, was a great success. Boston, Chicago, Denver, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Washington, D.C., which was our last event that live, all went well this year, although we did see in D.C. a drop-off in attendance as we're getting closer and closer to this kind of flipping point on COVID-19. We were actually in Philadelphia. I was actually in Philadelphia all alone, setting up this show uh, on Thursday afternoon, what we call Exhibitor Ready, where exhibitors move in on Friday. We open the doors on Saturday. Friday afternoon, they us for weeks that they were all set, uh, the governor and the mayor closed down events. Huh. So we had the whole thing set up and then we had to unset it up. Uh, well, so that's, well, you just walked walk the ex exhibition hall by yourself and there was nobody there, right? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, we are very close contact with our venue partners and in Philadelphia we're in contact with the most daily for the last two weeks. But up to the event, they say, no, we're open, you're, you're in, we're gotcha. You'll have people there, and we did a pretty good registration, as a matter of fact, but it uh, didn't turn out to be the case, and probably the right decision for that matter. Yeah. Now, uh, the, uh, were uh, any other shows, have you had to postpone any of the other shows this year so far? Right. So our last three were Philadelphia, Dallas, and um, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. So San Francisco Bay would be the following week from Philadelphia. We post that to the end of July. We have Dallas set up for 8th and 9th of August, and Philadelphia would decide to push off for the whole year uh, because basically people already spent their money on traveling to a show that didn't happen anyway. So that's to help our exhibitors. Uh, and we made those decisions pretty quickly after the events were down. But we're, we're still very in with each venue, each place to see what can still take place, what can't. I know venue in Dallas Hall has just put on an event and they're open for business with new guidelines. So we're working and watching that very carefully. And San Francisco still remains to see what happens in California. It's hard to it's hard to figure California out. Yeah, it's hard. And, and uh, but you still have some some going now. Now, what you've done, I know, is coming up in May that you've uh, substituted uh, uh, basically a new virtual show. 
Uh, can you tell us a little bit right. about uh, that? Um, you know, you're working on this virtual show to connect with your audience and travel consumers. Um, how, the, how is that going to work? Well, you know, the whole concept is we have uh, over a thousand travel marketing companies that work with us each year across all our events. We have hundreds of thousands of consumers and have literally about 5,000 travel agents that come to all these events. So while we're kind of hunkered down and waiting for everything to get figured out, what else can we do to our customers? And we thought, let's connect them up this virtually for the time being. And one of the things we kept hearing from our exhibit companies is, what's the world going to look like? When can we start marketing again? And it's appropriate to market, right? That's right. a touchy subject right now. Do you even want to ask for the order yet from a traveler versus wait to be a little sensitive? Although we see 20 bookings really ahead than we did before. So that's kind of a nice sign. So the virtual concept is something we took on in, in numerous ways. One, we have a back to travel campaign. That's where we have our vendor Bahamas or our speakers like Samantha Brown, or we might have a, a, a travel tour operative in virtual content online as well as a series of that we put in. We get 500, 600 of our 10 to these webinars. And it's kind of a nice function for everyone to connect virtually. And if you want to plan to go to Bahamas, we have a seminar in a couple of days at night, and you start to watch Netflix again. Huh. I'll tune in. You might know about. Um, on the flip side of that, we ran a conference in New York every year for international tourism boards. The director of that board and their top marketing people would come in. We get about 150 of them, and would give an economic overview of American traveler. So we do a whole presentation all about economics in the world and the travel tree. We'd have a celebrity session talking about creative issues and messaging. We'd end up with the psychographics and demographics of travelers. But uh, again, end of May, we do that every year. Can we do that now? No, we can't. So let's do it virtually. So we're going to do a giant Zoom one and open it up to the world. We expect a few thousand travel marketers online with us. Yeah. Talking to people um, and learning about what's going on and what's the world going to look like in travel when COVID kind of passes through us. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, I believe that is May 27th. Is that the correct date? That is the correct date, May 27th. You can go to travelshows.com backslash trends and sign up for early info and we'll get the registration links up open this week and we'll start getting everybody involved. It's a free conference for these people to learn, uh, that we invite. Let's get your name in, invite you. Uh, and it's gonna be interesting. We have really great speakers this year. Uh, Adam Sachs uh, is on from uh, <clears throat> Uh, Destination Analytics, we got Aaron Francis, we've got Peter Greenberg from CBS News moderating a panel of celebrities, Roger Dow from uh, West Travel, we've invited the uh, Secretary General for UN, uh, WNTO, uh, which is all trade organization for world travel. We're going to have great information about what does the world look like, what do the economics really look like today, and then how do we target people now and start talking about travel again and who's going to travel first and how. Yeah, no, and it sounds like a great program. Uh, uh, but it, but for my people, for my, for for our our viewers, our travel advisors, they can sign up and take a look at that as well, right? It's just as important to them as anyone else, right? If they know how marketers are going to be marketing, they can then support that through the sales channel that they have. No, absolutely. Now, uh, what what are some of the uh, sort of issues you really want to address? I know you even have a series, uh, sort of a panel of travel travel celebrities, including Peter, right. Samantha. I think Pauline Frommer, uh, people like that, who uh, will be discussing how to better engage travelers, correct? Exactly, and even uh, we have Andrew McCarthy, who uh, I know all the women will know from his movies, uh, but he's also a great director and a, and a travel writer, and uh, really great content there of how do you really message today to inspire confidence in people to travel again? I think that's all part of it, right? I mean, we're all gonna be coming out of this. We know we're all gonna start to travel again. The question is, What's it really gonna take for people to put their money down, get an airplane, get on a tour again? What does that look like? And what is the messaging format to get them excited about travel again? No, absolutely, and that's uh, we, we and, and of course, when to deliver that message. Um, now, right. what, what kind of, besides that, what other kind of information do you think travel professionals need today to help recover from the sort of the COVID pandemic world? Well, I tell you, you know, it's, it's hard to figure out today what's, what are the facts and what aren't, right? I mean, it almost changes depending what channel you have to, of what's really going out on there. I'm reading more and more editorial about did we go too far 
with our shutdown based on real data that shows up at the end of the day. You look at countries like Sweden versus Germany versus the U.S., trying to figure out what's right and what does the future look like is very difficult. And I think the most important thing people are going to have to start getting back to is common sense and really understanding their own health based on what's going to happen, right? right. So we know there's therapeutics coming online now. If you're relatively healthy to catch the thing, you, most people, it's not an issue, right? For a lot of people, it becomes an issue they get through. With therapeutics, we know that'll help even more. If you're my 84-year-old mother with a couple of conditions, you probably want to be a little more hunkered down for a while till there's a vaccine, perhaps, right? So there's a lot of information like that, which I think hasn't been spelled out well by the community. And that's a big problem, I think, for the business world, because it's all shut down, shut down. It went from bending the curve to now not having... Uh, any more loss of life versus the trade-off of which, what can an individual really do based on his risk factors to still live a fairly decent life, right? Correct. And I think uh, advisors might be that consultant to a vast array of consumers that are looking to travel to ask those questions, right? They're going to have to start talking a little bit more about health factors as it relates to communicative diseases as part of their due diligence with the client, right? We know that if you're an older person with comorbidities, going on a large bus tour probably isn't a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. If you're 27 years old and want to go on a Contiki tour with a bunch of other 27 year olds, odds are you're gonna do just fine. Mm -hmm. So we need travel agents to help consumers gather that information through a Q&A session, uh, apparatus, I believe, and help guide them to the right kind of providers that can give them a tour that fits their health and risk profiles. I don't think that's been done in the past, right? I think we've talked about adventure risk and adventure uh, uh, exertion activity sort of limits people might have. Can I go upstairs? Can I take long trips? But we haven't really talked about health. And for the first time ever, we're going to have to integrate the travel advisor into the process which I think will be good for them because I think it's harder to do online than it is person to person. Agent becomes um, an, an invested party in that consumer and they know their customer better. And hopefully they can rely to themselves. Yeah. And I think that's important. No, that, that's great information. And of course, to, to see people talking about that will be great on uh, May 27th. Uh, now, I know you're putting together sort of a survey on what American travel will look like uh, later this year and in the future as it relates to both international and domestic travel. Uh, can you give us a little preview of that report if you already have it? Yeah, you know, we do a quick survey when it's all started to find out what are people, who's been affected and how, what are their thinking and so forth. And, about 85% of the people said, yeah, there are 1,700 people that are travel enthusiasts, we call them. So their travel plans have been impacted, right? But most of that was in the Q1 and Q2 part of the year. Um, Q3 and Q4 were very limited. And only about 3% of them said it's affected their 2021 plans. When you ask them, what do they plan to do about it? Uh, they had plans in the after July and August. They weren't changing anything. Right? Uh, how will that be when we survey them a month from now? I don't know. Again, it's it's what's going on in the world of news and and how are people uh, understanding their own health fact based on what they determine the risk is. Um, personally, I'm, I'm from my standpoint. I don't do. Um, I'm, I just thought enough. Tell me what my risk is. Is me trying to figure it out myself. And I think we can do that as adults and American citizens. This economy roaring and do interesting travel again way, and um, and we all have to learn how to do that. No, absolutely, and uh, you know, and and obviously, uh, all of our new social media and social technology that we've gotten, such as this Zoom, it's wonderful. Although, as you and I both know, we have technical difficulties with this. Yeah, sometimes yeah, it works, and it sometimes it doesn't work so well, depending on your internet. You never have we been so de uh, dependent on an ISP uh, as as today. And what right. what's happening in that, and then clearly they're being overloaded these days. Let's let's. And the hardest the hardest challenge I think people have right now is trying to. You almost have to be Jules Verne, right? You have to understand what the solutions are coming down the pike we don't know about yet. Yeah. If they have instant testing, right, that they can test to see whether you had it or have it, 
that changes the way we travel, the way we do events and everything else. Because you can say, I can test every single person coming in and feel comfortable to be around them when I'm in the plane, or the exit hall conference, right? Um, or a restaurant. Yeah. That will come. I don't well, know if that's... Actually, da down here in, where I am in Orlando, we're already going to restaurants, which is actually uh, suddenly such a pleasurably experience since I realized I had not been in a restaurant for over a month. So it's you know, and I I see the holidays are getting busy all of a sudden. It used to be a ghost path when I'd go to check my mail at the office once a week. Now there's a lot more cars. So I think people are. I don't know if people are saying, okay, we're getting at it now, and the economy is going to come back in a nice way. And I believe that's the case. I think. I think we as Americans need to be mobile and, uh, and whether it's travel, work, or just getting out during the day. And we can take some of this, we've done our part, now it's time to start building the, uh, building the world infrastructure back up and get out and moving. Absolutely, now uh, more specifically, what do you think will happen to you know, events like yours, to physical travel shows, both for the trade and consumer uh, events, travel shows, as we emerge from this crisis? Well, I tell you, I and some of my staff are at some uh, industry councils right now looking at that very subject and what the solutions are in there. They're as wide as they are places to go. We know that uh, when, when Los Angeles, uh, you look at Los Angeles market itself as a downtown, the exposition business, gives $7 million worth of business to the local tax and, and restaurants and hotels and so forth, it has to come back. They're not going to let it go away. Uh, how that affects people coming in will depend on, a, again, some of the technology we don't know about yet. We know if we had to do it today, we could probably do some, and if you've had an antibody test that is positive, that got immunity to this, we'd probably let you walk right in. If we could do a 15-minute test effectively in each of these venues with, a, with the local health departments working with the venue and keep people correct and they come out negative, they should be able to go in and we should all feel comfortable. Uh, I think there's things like that right now that could happen, but as we go forward, you'll see it just like in airports. There'll probably be masks for a while. There'll probably be temperature checks. There'll probably be more distancing. How we affect conference rooms and seminar sessions and be interesting. we go to standing. We, for our standpoint, for the next series of events, will not put out carpeting. We'll go to bare event and let the cleaners sanitize the floor more frequently in an easier way. Um, it's not at least but it probably makes more sense. Can we separate booths a little more? Yes. Can we put participants between registration and attendees? Yes. There's partitions between them and the probably. Um, but if a vaccine comes out in October, I probably don't have to worry about it. So That's right. um, there's a lot of unknowns that, that we we'll see. Luckily for me, we've got a couple of events to try this all that will work with venues. You know, July in San Francisco happened. We don't yet because their rates of infection have gone down quite a bit. But again, there's politics involved there. Alice, in August, I feel pretty good. I mean, in Texas, you could almost do anything, right? But, uh, it's a good market, and Texans are pretty brave, and we'll see how that goes. Um, next year, I'm pretty comfortable, but we do have, for example, our planning. We've got our first quarter, and we've got an ancillary date in the second quarter for every one of those men, every one of those men, just in case there's a hot that kicks it up. So. A lot of knowns around it, but people have a desire to talk to people face to face and learn. And um, I personally believe we'll get through this and people will be, if, I'm, if people are going to get in airplanes and get in the sports venues, they're going to come to expositions. No, absolutely. And of course, uh, you do have, uh, you know, I think you said that the first physical show you have is, is in, uh, uh, in at the end of July, right in San Francisco. Uh, if it goes through after that, Dallas, and we'll see what happens, uh, the rescheduled event. Uh, right. But I guess the, the, the real question is, yeah, what, what are we going to do? For the, we will obviously have to take precautions. I mean, ironically, we're, we are talking today, uh, a date when Shanghai Disneyland just reopened, right. and they're taking all kinds of precautions. They have uh, social distancing. Everybody wears masks. Uh, uh, people are, you know, every alternate table in restaurants. And, and people kind of like it because apparently there's only about five to 20 minute lines on all the attractions, which if you ever saw Shanghai Disneyland before, that never happened. So, uh, you know. Yeah, I get, is, it, is it the same experience? We don't know, right? With, with two people. So it's kind of going to be a weird, brave new world for everybody. Yeah. But, now, uh, yeah. Is it, so is there anything else that you'd like to get out to our travel advisors about your shows and uh, your plans? Obviously, uh, you want to get them to, to come take a look at your virtual show on May 27th and uh, uh, 
uh, I think they'll find some interesting speakers who uh, uh, can can tell them a little bit about what's going on and even more by then because we'll be almost, uh, you know, two more weeks uh, into it. Well, for all the travel advisors out there, we're coming to a city near you. Look us up. We want your support. We need your support. More importantly, we want to help you meet with providers that we bring in face to face. You can build up your knowledge in your representations. You'll make new contact with some new deals. More importantly, I'm looking forward to seeing travelers become this great new clearinghouse for travelers in a new and interesting way, steering people to the proper kind of based on their economic and health issues now, not just economic anymore. So it's going to be a very interesting thing, but travel is going to play a huge role in the recovery in ways they don't even know yet. And I, I'm excited about that. And There'll be technology that integrates with them, but the, they're going to become true advisors now in every sense of the world, uh, every sense of the word. And, and that's what it's going to take, I think, for the first steps of people to get out around the world again. Absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, travel advisors, once again, another disaster has hit, and it's shown us once again that there is a, a huge need and uh, a value right. that a travel advisor brings to the travel equation. And we need to get out there more than ever to both educate and train good travel advisors and train consumers that this is actually a great way to travel and use their services. Uh, John, exactly. th thank you so much for taking the time. Sorry for the technical difficulties on this one. Uh, we'll, we'll get this up and get this out uh, this week. And uh, it's great to meet you and, uh, on this one. I, I, and hopefully uh, we'll see you physically at some point. Uh, we will. Guaranteed. Uh, you know, Let's see that. It, it, but it, but it's, until then, uh, I guess we'll have to live with the Zoom call. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you, James. Take care. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.